Good morning to our St. Mary family and all of our visiting friends. Good morning to you. We're, we're broadcasting from St. Mary's Church this morning. We cannot uh, come together physically, but we thank God that our hearts are blended together by Him. And just good to have this opportunity to still present a word uh, from God to us as a church family, a word of encouragement and a word to keep us strong during these uh, trying times. There's some information that I, that I must give us. Uh, first of all, there will be no church activities uh, this upcoming week. Now, we don't know yet how long we'll be out. We just have to listen to the, uh, those that are in charge of uh, the, the, the medical authorities, and we take our direction from them. Also, we take directions from God. So hopefully we won't be apart too long, but as a church, we still must study God's word. And through God's word, we gain strength and encouragement, and we're able to endure these troubling times. The, the word of God told, told us, instructs us that uh, in these last days, uh, before the Lord returns, that certain things will happen that would be a uh, sign of the beginning of sorrows. And we're certainly living in those days, and one of those things that, that will identify those times is uh, pestilences, incurable diseases. Man uh, does not have the knowledge, nor power, nor enough money to heal these incurable diseases, but we know God has the cure. And we just have to stay confident and keep our trust in God, but yet we cannot be radical in our thinking. We must think with a sound mind, so we just thank God for giving us that sound mind and mind to think right and just pray as a church family, as a Christian, we just pray and trust God and ask God to lead us in the right way and he will do uh, just that. So we just thank God for this privilege coming together this morning. At the end of this program, uh, this little short message, I'm going to give you some instruction. I'm going to give you uh, on how, if you want to do it, on some things you can do to sort of help yourself alone since we're mostly confined to our homes anyway some things that I believe work I know they work because I tried for a couple of days I wouldn't be telling you about anything that I haven't tried myself I tried them for a couple of days and they already uh, done great things for me so I just want to pass this information on not not something that I thought of or I dreamed of it was something that someone sent to me and after investigation I found it to be true and after certainly trying it, I certainly found it to be true. So I want to share this information with you as a church family. Now, this is the fourth Sunday uh, in the month of March. And I was, uh, my heart is still sad uh, this morning that we are able to come together because we had uh, a group of young adult men at this church that were going to do devotional uh, for us today. But Lord's will, we get together again. And our baby is our choir who are doing such a tremendous job. Uh, children's choir, youth choir, they were going to sing today. They had prepared a great song service, and I believe these brothers, but the help of the Lord, had, had prepared us a great devotional service. So when we come together, we will allow this group of young men to do what God uh, has blessed them to be able to do. So I'm certainly looking forward to that. Now, uh, from the Word of God, what we what we all must understand as the Word of God encourages us is that in Ephesians chapter 3. Verse number 17 through verse uh, 21 it instructs us, first of all, that Christ uh, must dwell in our hearts by faith. This is certainly a faith wall uh, that we own. If you don't have faith to believe in God, to believe in Jesus Christ, and to believe that God is able to do all things, if you don't have enough faith to pray, uh, pray if you don't have enough faith and trust in God to fast, you, then, then you won't be able to stand during these trying and trusting times. Certainly, we don't preach any other gospel here but the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we don't make up our own doctrine because we know that strength is found in the true word of God. And we're not wise enough to change anything that God has said. So that being said, by faith, and that means we must be rooted and grounded in love. That's what Ephesians uh, chapter 3 tells us. It's all about love. Love, it has a way of connecting us together that when things happen in our society, uh, happen amongst God people, and yes, we're even affected by the things uh, that go on in this life, that God will keep us together through love. Love is what holds 
holds us together. Love is what empowers us as a group to strengthen one another, to call one another, to pray for one another, to help one another along the way. So we must be, our hearts uh, must be led by faith and we must be rooted and grounded in love that we may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ, listen here, which passes knowledge, hallelujah, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. God wants to fill us with his power. He wants to fill us with knowledge, but we must be first rooted and grounded in faith and in love. If any of those things are missing in our lives as Christians, then certainly we won't be able to do all that God has given us to do. First of all, God works on us individually, and then he brings us into a body of corporate worship where when we get together, it should be explosive praise in its faith when all the children of God have been rooted in the word of God and our faith is unwavering. What the enemy wants is to catch us in a time of weak faith, in a time when we're doubting, when we're like the waves tossed to and forth on the, on the sea, where we, we believe one thing today and then we believe another thing tomorrow, and somebody come along with something that sounds good to our ears, and we will run off behind them. But what Christians need to do in times like these is to stay steady in our faith. As a matter of fact, if we're rooted and grounded in our faith and in love, what will happen, God will bless us and take us to a higher level in our Christian faith through trying times like these because we can see God in this time as a deliverer. Nobody can deliver us out of these times, these tough times, but God. I don't care how much money you have. And certainly America is a very wealthy country, but America and all this great wealth cannot come up with a cure for this virus. The only thing they can do is tell us to stay away from each other, stay inside, and live in our social contact. But when God does something, God does it well. Amen? But what happened, I, I just, I'm just a believer in this, is that God is going to use this time to bring some people that didn't trust in him to come to, to bring them into a right relationship with him. But what has to happen for, for that to come to fruition is the Christians have to be visible in times like these. We need to stand up and let people know who we trust in. They don't need to see the Christian at the gas pump crying with them. They don't need to see the Christian in the grocery store line crying with them. They need the Christians to be talking about how good God is, and yes, I'm depending on God, and no man, not even myself, for deliverance, I'm depending on God. And if you hold your faith in God, then God will see us through. So God is able, uh, Ephesians 13 tells us, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask, and here's the real catch, or that we think. We can't even imagine what God will do. We don't know how God is going to deliver us, but we know God is going to deliver us, and we don't, we don't even know what's on God's mind right now. We have no way of going, but we must trust in God because we know that God is an awesome God, and God can do just what he wants to do. Now, understand this. Understand this. Uh, from the Gospel of St. Matthew, uh, verse, uh, chapter number 24, understand this clearly. Verse 8 tells us that these are the beginning of sorrows. It's not the end. These signs was happening before the return of the Lord. It's not the end, but no way to say it. These are the beginning of sorrows. Christians, those who trust in God, those who believe in God, still get caught up and the what's going on in this world. But the good thing about being a child of God through Jesus Christ is that we have a comforter. We have the helper with us that even though we go through, we can still have joy. In the midst of adversity, we can still have joy. But if you're trusted in man to work it out and you sit down and look at the news, then all you become is depressed and bogged down with the cares of this world. But when you find freedom in Jesus Christ, 
and you maintain a steadfast trust in the Lord, I am a living witness that God will deliver. Amen? God wants to deliver. Amen? According to the power, listen, listen, he's able to do exceeding the bodily above all that we ask to think. According to the power, listen, that worketh in us, uh -oh, God is going to do some things during these times in us with the power, not that we have within ourselves of our own, but the power that he has placed in us. God is going to show He's not going to come down to heaven and manifest himself, but he will be manifested through all believers. That's why we must not get caught up into this depressing culture that we live in and lose hope in God and his delivering power. God has shown all throughout history that he is a deliverer, but God wants to use us to do some powerful things. Now, now, that being said, when God uses you in a mighty way, don't claim credit for what God is doing. Don't point anyone in your direction, but point others in the direction of the Almighty God. Amen? Unto him, the scripture says, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages. Now, listen. My mind tells me that through all that we're going through now, listen, our house of worship shouldn't be big enough to hold the people that, that should run and give their lives to Christ and to God through his son, Jesus Christ. Because I'm telling you, this is the beginning of something. But my brother and sister, I stand here to clearly tell you, you haven't seen anything yet. But when you, when you hold on to God's unchanging name, through it all, through it all, in the book of Isaiah, God tells us very clearly, I'll be with you through the wars. I'll be with you through the storm. This is a storm we're going through. The waters are rising, but nothing can separate us from the love of God. So God is not the problem. The problem is with his people. We've always been a problem. The biggest thing is a lot of us by nature are self-centered. And we don't rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to chase those things out of us. When God takes, when God takes things out of our life, things that we don't need, things that have wrecked our life, and when God takes these things out of our life, we run back to those things that God has delivered us from. And we get caught up in that same snare that brought us so much trouble. I don't know about you all, but I can testify to me. When I came, when I came to Jesus, I came just as I was. And those things that entangled me, those things that brought me so much trouble, I am so glad that God separated me from them, and I praise him for the power that, that he gives me to keep me from running after those things again. But now that being said, I'm not standing here before you claiming to be perfect, but I'm claiming to be one that's a work in progress. You have to be able to see the hand of God working in your life. And if you, if you had any relationship at all with Jesus Christ, there's absolutely no way you're not different than you used to be because he is the difference maker. And that's why we can testify and boast about him and not about ourselves. Amen. Because man, we'll, we'll deceive our own self. Amen. So, so uh, uh, he worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages uh, in this world without end. Amen. Isaiah verse chapter 40, verse 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord don't get in a hurry. Don't get in a hurry. Wait on the Lord. You may be weak right now in your faith. It's been put to the test. James asks us, can you pass the test? We go through tests and trials as, as Christians. It's not a uh, flowery bed of ease being a Christian. But we go through tests. But you have to stand there and trust God to deliver us. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk 
and not faint. Wait on God to deliver us out of the situation. I guarantee you, God has his eyes on us. God knew what we'd be going through at this uh, uh, time before anyone knew it. God knew it before the foundation of the world, so we must trust God to be our deliverer. But we as common creatures in uncertain times, and especially when we're not in physical control of the situation, we get uneasy. But we have to be rooted in our faith and learn to stand, watch, and pray while God's while God works His plan out. But don't forget to fast as you pray. If we do as God prescribed in His Word, then not only will we just get through this. And I'm going to tell you, as a Christian, we're not going to just barely get through this. As a Christian, we're going to come out on the other side with a new song to sing, a new praise in our heart. And I'm going to tell you right now, as Christians ought to be praising God right in the midst of this situation because I love the song in the middle of you. Got, you have to praise Him right in the middle of it. Nothing should still our door and nothing should quiet our praise. I don't care what happens. See, it's only a test of your faith. It's only a test. If you can shout before this, you should be able to shout doing this. If you can praise God before this, then your praise should be even louder now because it's the same God we serve. The same God that delivered us. The same God that has changed us is the same God that's keeping us right now. So what kind of church are we this morning? St. Mary, visiting friends, what kind of church are we this morning? God knows. God knows. And God knows what kind of church he wants to shape us, mold us into. The church that was founded upon the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, is very important to God the Father. But when the church gets caught up into what's going on in society. And then, because sin is so rampant in the land, and then the church starts to look like the world, God has a problem with that. So, why are these things unleashed upon the earth? The same chapter Matthew tells us, because sin abounds is what brings these saints upon the earth. And man's love is waxing cold. That's not our love for one another. That's our love for God. We have people in the church that claim the name of Jesus and claim to love God with all of their heart and yet they'll do anything and come in the house of worship on Sunday morning and act like they have not done anything to offend God. And as Christians, we must decide what kind of church are we going to be. And when this body called St. Mary has been brought together. If there's one blemish, it casts a dark spot on the whole body. Our desire, my desire, it ought to be each of our desires is to do the very best we can by the help of the Holy Spirit to live the life that God has designed for us to live. That ought to be all that's our desire. Oh, sure, you may stumble along the way, but you can't keep stumbling. You must repent, turn back to God, so that God's plan can be fulfilled in our life. God has a work for us. We cannot spend all our time in here trying to teach the saints how to just be basic Christians. God wants us to come together here to worship Him, to praise Him, to love Him, so that we can go out and take a message to the street. We have to get out of these walls. Because there's somebody, there's somebody that's struggling right now with it. There's somebody that don't, they don't have any hope because they never learned to trust in God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Our job is to teach them. And you can't teach them, or you can't instruct them from the Word until they see it in your life. People know who we are before we go to their door. Our reputation precedes us. So we must, we must be what God wants us to be. So what kind of church are we today? What are our identifying marks 
that say who we are and what we are. What kind of church do we want to be in the future? And we ought to want to be a church that brings glory to God. Now, we can't bring glory to God and at the same time embarrass God. At the same time, disgrace God with our attitude, our behavior, our lifestyles as Christians. There's a conversion. Jesus brought salvation to this earth. There's a conversion process that's unavoidable, unavoidable for each and every Christian. Before you come and give your life to Christ, your mind must be made up that I'm going to accept the change that Christ brings in my life. No longer will I be the same. And if you are still the same person you were when Jesus Christ came into your life, if you're still the same person the day you made your confession that you believe that he died on Calvary's cross for the sin of the Lord, if you're still the same way you used to be, and some have gotten progressively worse, if that's you, then, then I want to serve notice on you this morning that you've never met Jesus. Because if you meet Jesus, you will be different. You won't be perfect, but you will be different. Why can't I be perfect, preacher? Because you're encased in this place. There's a war going on. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to leave your house to have a war. When you wake up, there's a war going on. Because you're a dual nature. And the spirit, the spirit needs, must overpower the flesh. The one you feed the most will be the strongest. And will overpower the other. So if you fill your head with worldly things, if you only cater to worldlessness, then your call of man will be the strongest. But if you stay in the Word of God, and if you stay in prayer with God, stay in communication with God, if you fast, if you all that God requires us to do, if you treat one another right, if we love one another, then the spiritual man will overpower the common man. And the spirit man, you'll find your way, you'll find yourself caring to the things of God and not to the things of yourself. So my brothers and sisters, I encourage all of us, if you want to be a church that's rooted and grounded in the word of God, we must not be afraid to look forward, to look forward to our future as Christians and to look forward to where God is going to take us because we don't know, I just told you earlier, we don't know the mind of God to look forward with excitement to what God is going to do and let go of those things that are only destroying us and let God build us up through his word. And I declare to you, as God builds us up, as he empowers us through his word, we will be able to do more things for God. Because I want to tell you, don't get comfortable. Because we haven't even scratched the surface yet of what God wants us to do, what he has in store for us. So let's prepare ourselves for this war that we're soldiers in. Let's prepare ourselves. God is the leader of this army. Let's prepare ourselves. Let's be obedient. Let's listen to the word of God. God speaks to you clearly. God speaks to you clearly. But God is not going to holler in your ear. If you got all this other stuff going on and all the world stuff trying to speak to you, if you have an ear for those things of the world, God is not going to force you to hear him. He wants willing servants. Servants who humble themselves. Humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. And let God lead us where he wants us to go. God bless you. Thank God for you. We pray you have been encouraged. Now I do want to give uh, just information. I told you earlier at the beginning of this message. That I would give some. Uh, I will let you know about something that I tried. And that was sent to me. And it's. It works for me, and I believe it's a proven that it works for me. I know clearly it works for me. I've been on it two days, and it works for me. I'm going to tell you, it sounds simple. Some people are not going to believe it because we like complicated things. That's why some people don't believe God's word because they're not complicated enough little more. Some people are not going to believe it. But listen, it sounds simple, but please, please, just try. Don't knock it until you try. Okay? Here it is, very clearly. I'm going to speak slow enough for you to get it. 
get you a large pot of tap water. Don't use purified water. You need tap water for the chlorine that's in the tap water. Get you a large pot, not a small pot, not a medium pot, a large pot. Fill it at least three quarters of the way with tap water. Peel three oranges, three lemons. Put the peelings only in the water. Eat the oranges later. Add some sauce of vitamin C, make lemonade out of the lemons. Then, one quarter cup of sea salt. You need the sea salt for the saline that's in the sea salt. You need the sea salt. Don't substitute. Don't substitute with kosher salt, regular table salt. Use sea salt. Very cheap, very cheap. Put a quarter cup of sea salt, bring it to a bowl on the stove, and then you may want, you might want to put a towel or something on your forehead, uh, because when you hold your head, now, now when your water comes to a bowl, turn the pot down to at least half medium high heat on the stove, because you can't hold your head over a pot of boiling water. So turn the pot down, and then hold your head over, and what you want to do is you want the steam to go up your nostrils. You want to breathe in the steam. Now what happens here is your, your nasal passages are the coolest part of your body. The rest of your body is regular body temperature, 98.6 or whatever your body temperature may be. But your nasal passages are always the coolest part of your body. That's why when this coronavirus it gets trapped in your nasal passage, and all of us have been exposed to these virus, all of us, it gets trapped in the mucus in the nasal passages, and it stays there, and then some of the first symptoms they say from coronavirus is you get a sore throat. Well, it starts to drip from your nasal passages, it goes down to your throat, then you get a sore throat, then it travels on down to your lungs, and then you get pneumonia. That's dangerous. But this hot water, the steam that you are breathing up your nose, know, just breathe regular. Every now and then I took an extra deep breath, but just breathe regular. And what happens, this heat destroys the viruses that are in your nasal passages. Now I know I tried this, I have bad allergies during this time of year when there's a lot of pollen in the air. I haven't been sneezing. This morning I got up, thank God I haven't sneezed yet. I've only done this for two days. I believe it works. If you try, don't knock it until you try. I know some people that never try for good, but I'll, I'll keep giving you my testimony because with the Lord's help, I'm going to stay on this. God bless you. We love you. Remember St. Mary, if you see somebody that stands in need of help, you're able to help them. Please help them along the way. God bless you. Thank you. We love you. Let's close with a prayer. Let's close with a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for being so good to us. We thank you, God, that even though we can't physically come together, that we can come together in our hearts. And, oh, God, we thank you for the internet that's, that's being used for so many wrong things. But, oh, God, we can use it right now to advance your kingdom. So we thank you for the power of the internet. And, oh, God, we're actually moving forward. We don't know where the end is going to be. We don't know uh, where, where this is going to lead us. But we know one thing, oh, God, that as long as there's breath in our body, we're going to stay with you. So, Heavenly Father, we have no doubt in our minds that you're with us because you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. So we thank you, God. We thank you for our church family. We thank you for our visiting friends, oh God, that will view these messages. We just praise you in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.